So this is the location of that 32,000 acres that Manly Haynes bought up. Remember Manly Haynes? He was the one who figured out how to irrigate the area. Yeah. He planned to establish a town here. And in 1907, when he submitted the plat lines for this town, the lines were drawn the size of Chicago. Haynes had great plans for this area. He planned to uh, bring electricity and, and irrigation water, right? You know, he built the hydroelectric plants and was going to provide everything, you know, anybody could possibly want. He had some money, didn't he? He did. Well, he had his, his well-connected father-in-law and he had visions, exactly. But to build a dam, that would be expensive. Yeah. So his plan was to establish this town and name it after himself. This was going to be Haynes, Washington. But it turns out that there is a Haynes, South Dakota on the Milwaukee, Chicago, St. Paul rail line. And the railroad said, no. <laughs> we cannot have two rail stations with the same name. Because there was a station here as well. So Haynes thought, well, then what are we going to name it? And Haynes, being the right guy, figured he would ingratiate himself with his father-in-law. And he chose Hanford to name the town. They tried to establish a post office in 1908, but the post office said, no, sorry, we already have a post office called Hanford, Washington, just north of Seattle. We're gonna have to come up with another name for your post office. So they thought, okay, Hanford, we could switch the syllables. And we'll call it Fordna. There we go, oh, Fordna, you know, I don't think we like Fordna. Oh, wait a second, Ford Hand. Ford Hand was the first suggestion. And they thought, no, we don't like Ford Hand. So they called it Ford Na. Ford Na? Ford Na. Oh. <laughs> Which I don't think was particularly nice either. But fortunately, about a year later, <coughs> the Hanford Post Office near Seattle got taken over by Seattle and the name became available and the post office could be called Hanford. Oh. So that was good. That was good. <laughs> so the town itself was located um, primarily out in this direction and that direction. It was um, pretty good size. We have an aerial map here. So the downtown, this was there was a ferry landing. This was the ferry landing right here. Ferry kind of came across here. I think it utilized the uh, flow in the river. But so you know, here's downtown, if you can call it that. Um, I don't know if the school, if you can tell where the school is. I think the school is located right that spot right there. Wow. There's a. Um, there's another aerial photograph back at the, uh, the Logston. You can see it a little better. The school was built in 1916. Um, uh. It started out as being about half the size it is. This was the original school that was built. The structure off to the side here was the gymnasium. It was oh, yeah. added in 1927. Wow. It was a beautiful school, um, nice appointments, Art Deco style. Yeah. Unfortunately, it burned in 1936, and at that time they had to send the school kids down to White Bluffs. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, you can imagine, oh. yeah, how that went over. <laughs> so, fortunately, it took them only about two years to rebuild, and the the new school reopened in 1938. Um, they added uh, an elementary school behind it at that time, and it operated uh, until 1943. When the government arrived, just like White Bluffs, with their letters of eviction. Wow. About 470 residents were, were forced to leave. They had to have an early graduation here at the school oh. uh, in order to get the kids wow. out in time wow. to leave. Uh, how, yeah. hundred, how many kids? Hundred and I don't know how many kids some there kids? would. Um, if you figure you got 470 people that lived here, I would guess it was probably between 30 and 50. Um, so in the not, high school? In the high school. Yeah. So not a lot of, a lot of kids. Um, the school itself still stands because the construction camp that housed the workers that built all the facilities here at Hanford was built off in that direction. About three miles in that direction and about two miles up from the river was a massive construction camp. At the peak of employment and the peak of construction, there were about 50,000 people living in that construction camp. Uh, wow. The school was the <laughs> construction office. So oh. they maintained it for that two and a half years that the construction camp was operational. But that, the kids went to their own school down there though, didn't they? 
in the construction camp? The kids, right, they did not use this as a school anymore. Yeah. The construction camp was actually pretty interesting. Um, DuPont, again, was the company that was tasked to build the facilities here, initially anticipated hiring about 20,000 workers. The camp was going to house 10,000. They figured the other 10,000 could find spare housing in the area. <laughs> there was no spare housing anywhere. So they had to expand the plans for the construction camp. And they also realized very quickly that they were going to need far more than 20,000 people. Yeah. So the camp started out with um, tents and hutments, Quonset huts, yeah. that the workers lived in. Later they built uh, barracks and dormitories. Huh. They did not envision families here. Uh, it was to be a, a short-term project. Originally the contract was for three years, but they finished in less than less than three years, a little more than uh, a little more than two years. But the turnover was high. Conditions here were tough. Workers were isolated. And they discovered that the few workers who brought their families with mobile homes were happier and more satisfied and tended to stay. And so the government thought, huh, maybe we could provide trailers for people who really needed to bring their families. So the country's largest trailer park was established <laughs> right here. 3,600 trailers oh. were oh situated God. here. And yeah, those people tended to be a lot happier and, and stayed. Uh, so it, it was a good thing. That they only lived there for two and a half two years? Two and a half years, two, less and than two and a half years. And then they, the construction was over. They took down the construction camp and... Uh, construction for the B reactor. Huh? Right, well, for all, the whole facility. All of them? Yeah. All the reactors? What, the three during World War II. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so during the Cold War, when they built additional reactors, uh -huh. They ended up establishing another construction camp in North Richland, and we'll oh. go by where that had been located. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so we can walk down here and, and take a look at the building. Nancy, what's that building over there? That's the Pacific Power and Light substation. So it's over here. No, nope, that's the same that's one. I know, you got a little mm -hmm. turned away. I did. I did, in fact. I <laughs> uh, went on a cruise. So the reason the building is in the shape it's in primarily is because it was used for SWAT practice after the uh, government left and it's been used for police training and, and stuff. So they're allowed to come down? Well, they have been. been. Yeah. Is that a it solar was, panel over there? It is. So that is a, a warning uh, alarm for the Northwest Power, or Northwest uh, Energy Northwest uh, Columbia Generating Station, our nuclear power plant. Oh. So they have a, a radius uh, in which they are supposed to have these warning systems in case something happens. Is that the warning? Miles. It is. Single is it 10 miles? Yeah. Thing the jig. Yeah. Technical term. <laughs> so it's got an auditory alarm as well as the voice. Wonder how many kids went through that building? I don't know, but uh, is it Patty? Patty Murray's father played basketball. Yeah. Yep. Right. So if you uh, look on the way back, there, 
there's a lot of leverites here in the form of um, spent gun shells. They're really? actually they're Both of those um, guys. Yeah, they're uh, crimped, so you can see that they're blanks. There's a number of them back here. They're always hard to find until you see the first one, and then it's like, oh yeah, there's more, there's more. <laughs> I always forget where they are. But they're the same color as the rocks, so it makes them hard to see. What is that thing? There. It's a warning system. No, or, uh, oh, not we that. talked about that. The, uh, with the pole. Oh, that was just part of the electrical distribution. Yeah, so that was part probably of... Oh, this was um, billions and billions of dollars project, wasn't it? Probably hundreds of billions. That? Hundreds of billions of dollars project there. It was at the time in, in, 19, yeah, in 1945, it was $2 million. That, uh, Two um, million? Yeah. That's it? Well, that's 1945. Yeah. yeah, so multiply that by 12. Yeah. I was just thinking of all the cleanup and stuff now. Well, that's okay, so that's a $2 billion a year. A year. Yeah, that's a yeah. expense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be going on for another. 20 years, huh? Well, we don't know. If they can. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Who does two white shirts again? How many? Those must be, I think there's thousands of people working now. So those are two reactors that we passed. Um, let me think. I don't know yes. How many. That's that. Because then there's. Yeah, it's got to be D and DR. Yeah, it's F yeah. and G yeah. straight yeah. away yeah. from yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a road then that runs along the river on that side? Yeah, but it's closed. Um, oh, it's closed? Because uh, so much slumping had happened. Um, oh. the, the earth movement kept closing really? the road. And, yeah, 91, yeah. 92 was like the last they... time you could go up through there because yeah. it happened after I moved here. How do you get in there? You go along the top and then it drops yeah. down in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. what road is that? Um, I don't know what it's called, but it used to go down to Ringo. <laughs> Never been over there. Oh, I went over there once. Shortly after we moved here, we took our bikes. And oh, yeah? it is tatweed heaven. I discovered oh, yeah. I discovered that you don't pedal pedal bike? Oh wow. Yeah. You discovered what green goop is for I the tire? I did. And actually unfortunately <laughs> I didn't discover it before I went there. Uh, I carried my bike out. I had two flat tires. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I have to confess the same sin. <laughs> First time I took a long ride, I had no idea what green goop was about. No, no. <laughs> no. What is green goop? It's a sealant that you put in your bicycle tires that Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You'll seal up to about eighth of an inch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it works. So it's hard great. to get a flat when you have green goop. It's yeah. not impossible, no. but it's difficult. And the thing you have to remember is when you stop your bike, you to spin your tires, pull yes. out all the bone heads, and yep. then spin it one last time. <laughs> A lot of history there. So, of course, 